that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen brought it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in the baskets, but threw the bad away. So we can sort of relate that to, to us, good people, bad people, certainly. And then, as Kyler mentioned, um, you know, Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 18, as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. So what do you think Jesus meant when he said that? Exactly, to tell Jesus about, or people about Jesus, and uh, it's sort of like fishing. So what do you do with the fish? You reel it in? So in this case, we're trying to bring people to Christ and to be saved and have eternal life, at least a chance to have eternal life. So whether we use a single line or cast a net, our job is to talk to people about Jesus and his saving power of forgiveness of sin. So it's sort of like fishing. So we talked about the fishing season last uh, three weeks ago or so, and we can relate that to Jesus and uh, guiding us and helping us to uh, be fishers of men and be just like what Jesus asked uh, of, uh, of all of us. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ability to have eternal life through faith and belief in you. We thank you for these children and help guide and shape them and become closer to you. And we thank you for all that you do for us each and every day. We ask all this through your precious name.
We're always glad to hear the praise report about a prodigal who has come home or how one is being healed and no longer needs to be in the hospital or the nursing home or how God met a financial need or hear the testimony of one who says, I have been healed in mind, body, and spirit and God is being really good to me. <clears throat> Father, we pray that we will continue to hear the good news this coming week because we know there is going to be a whole lot of bad news coming our way again as well. So may we, where we were, where we live this coming week, be one who is a person of good news, who sees the cup half full and not half empty, who sees the good instead of the bad, who gives hope to the hopeless and who brings joy to those who are sad and discouraged, who welcomes the prodigal as that one comes back home again. Help us to not only be the church, but be the church that continues to be faithful to you and your word. Help us to count our blessings because they are many. We can be thankful every day for where we live. We have food to eat and water to drink. We have freedoms and safety where we live. Forgive us for we take all of these things for granted. We don't even think about them until we hear about folks like those who are living in Africa or in the Ukraine. Those who will have no food have very little drinking water today. Folks who because of the war have no place any longer to call home, it's not there. And closer to home we have those in our country who this week because of the weather have lost nearly all of their earthly possessions. So as we freely travel home, as we eat at the table, as we rest in our favorite chair, as we enjoy all the comforts that we have, help us to see and count our blessings, realizing everything that we have, you have provided for us. And especially to remember, like the disciples of old, that you have given us a model to use when we pray. When they asked you to teach them how to pray, you said, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God, and may it become alive in all of us today. St. Paul uh, announces the removal or the tearing down of the barriers between the Jews and the Gentiles. And the kingdom of God is ready to advance. The church is to be a movement that continues to center on the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Our text today invites each of us to personally remove any barriers of our own making that would hinder the spread of the gospel of Christ. We are to hate sin and love the sinner. Personally, it happened to me like this. I was in high school. My mother asked me if I would wash down the walls in the living room because they wanted to change the paint color. And that was normally my dad's job, but his work schedule didn't allow him to do it this time. I can still see the room. I can still see the corner of that room in that three-tiered round table that was there. The bottom two tiers were covered with peach seeds. My dad would carve them, and he carved them into anything from a basket to a cross. My brother, sister, and I would rather clean any other room in the house beside that room because you had to take all of those seeds off, put them all back on again, and put them in place. The top tier had a vase on there that had been in the family for some time. When I was washing it down the wall, I moved the ladder, bumped the table, and everything went onto the floor. The peat seed survived without any problem, but the vase didn't. I picked up some of the pieces and went to find my mom, and I think with some tears in my eyes, I said, I'm really sorry, Mom, but I moved the ladder, I bumped the table, and the vase is in pieces. Her first response was, oh no, that vase has been in the family for years and years. But she said, it's okay. It's just the vase. You didn't get hurt, so it's okay. Even though she said that, it took a long time for me to believe that she really meant it. It didn't take my dad nearly as long because he didn't like that vase in the first place. <laughs> But my mom continued to show me love, and I would eventually believe for myself that she really did value me and our relationship more than a vase. And she would not allow that broken vase to come between us. It reminds me of a quote that I read from Robert Frost. He wrote, something there is that doesn't like a wall and wants it down. Walls, as we know, can be built that isolate us. For instance, history tells us that between two or three million Chinese died in building the Great Wall of China. Many of them were buried underneath that wall. And they came to call it the greatest graveyard in the world. But it did what it was designed to do. It gave them a sense of security but it was a mixed blessing because it walled them off then from the rest of the world, not only physically, but culturally and intellectually as well. So a price had to be paid. In 1820, China accounted for 33% of the world's gross domestic product. A hundred years later, it was only 9%. The industrial revolution that made Europe and America rich almost completely bypassed China. 
and they fell behind the rest of the world. There's something about a wall that can destroy. There's something about a wall that can protect. And what's true of countries is also true in our individual lives. St. Paul writes about walls. In our lesson today, Christ has broken down the wall of hostility. And in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. He himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier and the dividing wall of hostility. We believe that Paul, first of all, perhaps was thinking of the wall that stood in the temple in Jerusalem. The wall was three or four or five feet high and ran through the, the court of the temple. The purpose was to keep the Gentiles from entering the inner court. Only Jews were allowed in there. They say there wasn't any kind of a warning sign that warned them not to enter. But if they entered, they could be punished by death. It was a wall of discrimination. Paul called it a wall of hostility. We know all too well that people today build all kinds of walls of discrimination and hostility. And Jesus wanted and Jesus wants those walls to be torn down. St. Paul is referring to this wall that separates men and women from God. His words here may not be easy for us to relate to, but we know that Christ has a purpose. He creates in us a new person. He's trying to, to bring reconciliation not only to our lives, but to one another. Many would say, it didn't work very well. Just look at all the hate that's in the world today. Look at all the barriers that have been put up between people. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 9 in the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So let me ask you, are you a peacemaker? Christ came to bring peace. He came to reconcile us to himself and to one another. And yet, are there things there that we allow to be there that divide us? Bishop Willeman tells of hearing a story from a man who was a U.S. pilot during the Vietnam War. He said the pilot came to me and shared that he would bear down on that Vietnamese village and drop his bombs. He said, Bishop Willeman, it was a Sunday. I could see a crowd of people entering the church. It was only a glimpse, but I could see it clearly. Nobody ever told me that those folks went to church like that. Bishop, it could have been in my hometown. It could have been in my state. It could have been my church. They were just worshiping in the same way that we worship. They were going to church, and I dropped my bonds. He shared how difficult it is to live with memories like that. We build walls. We drop bombs. We do it as a nation. But we also do it as individual in our, individuals in our daily lives. And as we know all too well today, we do it in the church. When I was at Trinity Church in Brackenridge where I served, there was a man there named Ray. He stopped by my office one day and said, did you see that? young man sitting in the front pew Sunday with his ball cap on? I said, yeah, I did. I hadn't seen him there before, and I was thinking Ray was going to tell me who he was. But Ray said, with his voice getting louder and his face getting redder, if I could, I would have gone up there and knocked that hat off of his head. Doesn't he know you're not supposed to wear your hat in church? He should know better. 
And then he left. That night, we had a men's group. And as the men's group started, Ray said, can I say something before we get started tonight? And then he told basically what he had told me about that young man wearing his ball cap and not taking it off. He said, you know, when I went home and I started to pray about this, it dawned on me, I didn't worship. All I could think of was that young man in his hat and I got so angry. I didn't hear the sermon, I didn't read the scripture, I didn't hear much of anything. But then I began to think, maybe there's a reason that he wore the hat. I don't know. But I know if he comes back, and I hope he does, that I will welcome him, and I will go and sit with him during worship. Unfortunately, the young man never came back. And Ray learned how damaging a wall or a barrier over an unwritten dress code can be. Something there is that doesn't like a wall. St. Paul tells us that to be reconciled to one another, we first need to be reconciled to God. And that can happen because of the cross. The scripture tells us, teaches us that God loves everyone. And we are to open our hearts to that love. And then we are to share that love with everyone as well. From kids who break vases to other Christian denominations who don't worship and believe exactly the way we do to learning to love a teenager who wears a ball cap at church. We need to pray and ask God to give us love in our hearts that we need to love folks as Jesus loves. So may we ask God to help us today. Maybe there's a person that you're having trouble loving. Maybe you build a wall that needs to be torn down. Something there is that doesn't like a wall that wants it down. St. Paul wrote in our lesson today how Christ Jesus who knows we were once far away, can be brought near through His blood. We've discovered, we've received the good news. Now we need to share it and begin to tear down some walls, maybe that even we have built. Because once we've been reconciled to God, He wants us to be reconciled to one another so that His kingdom can continue to grow. Never said it would be easy, but he said it was necessary. <clears throat> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, how grateful we are that you tore down the wall that separated us. You made it possible for us to come to you and be saved from the sinful way of life that we were living. Help us today. Help us this week to tear down any wall that we may have built between us and someone who is different. For we want your kingdom to continue to grow, even through us.